Hello, I am JD Malazzo of the House of Night Falcon and today in this video I'll walk you through how to use the flambient lighting technique using Affinity Photo. For demo purposes I'll be using an architectural interior photo from a recent commercial project we photographed. This photo was taken while shooting tethered using Profoto strobes and a Pentax 645Z medium format camera. We took two exposures, one metered for outside and one properly exposed for the inside. And I will show you how to merge them together seamlessly. Here we have an example of the finished image with the process I will show you completed already. Now if we look at these two source images, I will show you what we will be merging together. All right, if we look at this one here, you can see this was shot with strobes with uh, soft boxes so the shadows are very light it was left open for 1.3 seconds and uh, it's a very good exposure for interior you can capture the detail in ambient light but the exterior outside it was a bright sunny day um, so the sky is burned out in white what we need to do is bring that back If we look at our other image here, this one was exposed for outside. I believe the exposure was 60th of a second. Um, this was shot with the strobes. It was also shot with a battery powered light, which did not have a softbox. as meant to overexpose around the window here so I can easily paint in without having to do a lot of erasing and getting rid of artifacts. And the problem with that is. So you can see here the shadows show up and we need to work to get rid of those. Alright, I'm going to close this down and um, show you the how to do this process. Okay, so we have Affinity opened up here. We're going to go to File, New Stack, Add. I'm going to select the two images. open. Now here these photos were shot on a tripod. The only thing that's different is the exposures and the lighting. So I don't need to click this live alignment. If you shot these handheld then you'd want to use this and it will um, do some aligning work. Um, since we don't need that we're going to save some time. And click OK. All right, so it has created our merge here. You can see our live stack group. If we click here, it will show us the two different source images. All right. Now you can see here it did a decent job overall, but as you can see, the sky outside is still overexposed, and we see some shadows here. Um, so more work is still going to be needed. All right, so we're going to click here on stacking operators. Right now it's set to median. We're going to go through and see what the other options here to and which one we want to select for this project. Usually for something like this I go with minimum so that's what we're going to click on here. Alright, now this did a really good job outside and overall pretty even exposure. What we've lost is ambient lighting detail and we have this, some of the shadow issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint that in using a brush. Alright, so this is how I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright, so what we need to do, we're going to click on the brightness level and here on this source we're going to duplicate and then drag it out of our stack so it's sitting on top. All right, I'm going to call this, name this layer just for organizing purposes. I'm going to name it Lighten because that's what we're doing. All right. Now, we're going to go here and we're going to go on the Merge and Lighten. So wherever this photo is lighter, um, what we're going to do is when we paint on, it will replace. So namely the shadows. Alright, so I'm going to hold down the Alt button 
click mask layer. And this has put on a layer mask. So now we're going to go over here, paintbrush. All right. Click on that. Now, usually for doing this, um, opacity 100%, flow 25%. We, won't, we don't want a very hard, we don't leave hard artifacts here, so hardness is at zero. All right, now we want to make sure color. We want to flip the main color to white. That's what we're going to be painting on for our mask. All right. So we just go ahead and start doing the work here. For the purposes of this video, I'm having to use my mouse. So it may not be as 100% accurate as if I were using my tablet. But for demo purposes, perfectly fine. Let's get paid in here. As you can see, it's bringing in some of the coloring and lighting from the recessed lighting here. So go ahead and paint. This gives us a very natural look. We have some shadowing here we're still working on. Sort of rub that. Paint that out. There's some shadows here. Go ahead. Get some color in from that. Maybe lighting on these. Do the same here. Some nice. Some nice color back to this image. I'm going to paint this, get rid of this shadow here. on the ceiling. One important thing I always remind myself to do which is to lift up on the pen or mouse so that if you make a mistake you can go back and undo. If you paint on for too long and make a mistake then you're going to have to cover your ground significantly. Okay, we have to be careful around the window. We don't want to be overexposed too much as well as with the lights. Let's go in the shadow here. Okay. All right. Um, now, is, I think I, I missed over here and I accidentally painted a little bit where I want, where I don't want to add brightness. So, I'm going to click on the eraser here. And we're just going to paint back. All right, 
and paint in. Just make sure. Still have some detail there. All right. I think for our purposes here today, I think that's good enough. Now the next thing we're going to do um, in this merging process, somehow um, we've got a little bit of color skew in the, the flooring here. Um, so I'm going to go back to the layer that was shot with the 60 of a second, which is going to have less ambient light in it, so more it's more likely to be color accurate. So I'm going to use this layer here. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate, drag it on top. Now we're going to name this color. All right. Do an alt mask. Now we're going to paint. Okay, there we go. Just paint the color. As you can see, it looks a lot more natural now. Okay. All right, now we are finished. As you can see, this is a much more natural overall image. We took the best of both source images, and we have one that looks a lot more natural in the way you would perceive the room if you were standing in it. One of the cool things about Affinity I really like, and it's a huge advantage over say Photoshop is everything we're doing here is they're on non-destructive layers so whatever I'm doing with the painting of masks in Photoshop once I close this or once I click on this layer it just I just lost all those changes I can't I can't erase out if I if I notice I painted over something that I, where I wanted detail too bad. You gotta start all over, copy paste, and um, do a new mask. With this non destructive layering, I can go ahead and say, I missed this area and paint over it. It saves that. Real easy, really awesome. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope it helped.